Now, what is up my fellow prod coders? Welcome to this video. And today we will briefly cover HTTP basic auth. So let's just start with our goal in mind, right? So with HTTP basic auth, we want to make authenticated requests. What does that mean? Okay, let's just suppose we have two servers, like server A and server B, but it could also be like a client, you know, like your terminal or whatnot. And you want to talk to a server. Now, the issue is if you use an unsafe protocol like HTTP, any attacker, like anyone who can read the traffic, basically a man in the middle, can intercept the traffic and know what you are sending to the server. And this might be a big issue if this is uh, sensitive information. Now, for this, we actually have HTTPS, right? So if you are like server A and you want to talk to server B, well, you just use HTTPS and then you cannot have any man in the middle attacks. Like you cannot read uh, what server A is sending to server B. However, that does not prevent like some malicious server from just making a call to server B and saying, hey, uh, just give me all your data, right? Because server B has no idea or like has no way of determining uh, whether you as server A or like as any client are supposed to access that particular type of data. And this is obviously where authentication comes in. And uh, HTTP basic auth is one form of authentication. So let's have a look at how that works. So we have the same setup as before. Now the only difference is that um, instead of only sending the payload over HTTPS, we are sending something in addition called an authorization header. And in this authorization header, we basically put a username and password. So that means every time like we want to talk to some other server, we put in a username, we put in a password, like in a specific format. I will quickly show you like what that format is. But for now, let's say we put it in a specific format and then we send it to server B. Server B is going to check the username and the password in the header. And if it's not there or if it's incorrect, then it's going to say no. And if it's correct, you can perform the operation. And like so, we don't have the issue that some malicious uh, guy here can just, you know, ask our uh, server to just give it all, all its data. Now, that's basically the main setup. And um, I just want to briefly cover like how that works specifically. And uh, one note beforehand, so HTTP basic auth is only safe or relatively safe, <laughs> let's put it like that, if you use it over HTTPS. I mean, obviously, if this communication channel here is not safe, meaning you use HTTP, then anyone like in the middle can just have a look at your request, uh, like steal the username and the password. And then, uh, yeah, there's basically identity theft and then you can do whatever you want. Now, that's also one of the main issues with HTTP basic auth because it is so basic, you know. And if that guy here somehow manages to get their hands on the username and the password, yeah, then it's over. But let's first cover like how to build this orange, uh, this authorization header here I've marked in orange. So there's a couple of steps. Um, the first step is you need a username and a password. And the first step is to base64 encode the username. So that means if your username is production coder, you base64 encode it, and this is what you get out of it, right? So everything in this HTTP basic auth header or in this authorization header uh, is base64 encoded. And you do the very same with the password. So say you, your password is my password, then you base64 encode that as well. And then you end up with something like this. And um, then you join these strings together um, and you separate them by a colon. So this is basically the base64 encoded username and this is the base64 encoded password. And then afterwards you build the actual authorization header 
by a prepending uh, basic and a space. And the purpose of this is that there are many different ways on how you can authenticate. And this basically indicates what type of authentication we're using, right? So if, say, if we're using bureau tokens, right, the, we somehow have to state that we're using bureau tokens. If we're using basic auth, we need to say that we're using basic auth. Uh, the important thing here that there's a space here, right? And in this header itself, like just one more thing, um, you do not have like these quotes, right? I just put them here so that you know, um, this is the string and this is like what we're sending. But in the header itself, like we do not put like the quotes as a character, so to say, because it's assumed to be like a string anyway. Yeah, and then if you have this header, then you basically put um, your payload like just the normal payload, I don't know, some JSON request payload. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, so as you can see, HTTP basic auth is like pretty simple. Um, and even though it is so simple, it is used by yeah, quite a few big players in the industry. So for example, um, Stripe, uh, like they use HTTP basic auth um, just because it's simpler or it is simple. It is simpler than other methods of authentication. Now, one drawback of this is that for every request you send the um, password, the username and the password um, with it. And that's kind of a problem, right? I mean, ideally you only want to send your username and password once, then you get something like a token and then you work with that token. So like so you just have less exposure. Um, so that might be like one downside of, of basic auth. And of course that basic auth by itself is not like extremely strong. So it does get the job done, like it works if you set it up properly. As I said with uh, HTTPS or like with some encryption, because as we also saw in these steps here, this password here, it's not, you know, encrypted with anything. So it's just base 64 encoded. So everyone who, so or anyone who has this string here can immediately get the plain text password, right? So HTTP basic auth, pretty simple actually. Um, it works, was one of the first things that basically came out. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell how this works. Uh, thank you very much for watching and please make sure to give the video a thumbs up uh, please leave me a comment if you have a question and uh, also I created a mailing list so if you guys want to decide what we cover next on the channel then you can sign up there and then you can have a say in what videos I will publish next. So again thank you very much for watching please subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.